is Pukeology Podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Memo. So let's get down to the pooping point. And I'm going to make it real quick. Will I poop on the table? Sounds totally and utterly gross, but believe it or not, that's just a reality of what we ladies will have to face during delivery. Let me end up giving you the science behind it all today on Pregnancy Pucology Podcast, episode 34, Pooping While Giving Birth. Want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no more headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your worst nausea, vomiting, or headaches now. Or just place no more nausea ban on your baby registry for your delivery bag at Bye Bye Baby or get it shipped to you for free in just two days on Amazon as a Prime vendor. And know that your little ones are always taken care of at your local CVS store that carries the first and only no more nausea kids and no more sleepless nights kids, just in case the little ones don't have a very good bedtime routine with all of this self quarantine. Pregnancy humor that may just make you want to pee your pants like you don't have to pee all the time anyway with hilarious stories like Jello Jiggler, Zoom Zoom, and Buddha Baby. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy, humor and knowledge is the key to help you survive these nine months and just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the science behind why pregnancy poop actually happens, especially during delivery. Do epidurals increase my chance of pooping? Do I need to worry about having a baby in the toilet? And most importantly, how can you prevent having pregnancy poop easily with some helpful natural hints from a mom and doctor who have already been there before? The Science of Puke, Pukeology. So, Will I poop during delivery? Some OBGYNs jokingly say it's about a 100% chance. I myself have been in far too many deliveries that I even want to count on, and I'm talking about vaginal deliveries. So C-sections are a little bit different, but a majority of people who have tried to labor vaginally end up turning into a C-section. So I'm just talking about a vaginal vaginal delivery. Some, again, say 100%. I think it's more like 75-ish if I'm going to go for it, 75% of people will actually poop on the table and I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of an idea why and don't be worried or embarrassed any good clinician no one's going to be pointing and saying hey film this instead it's really to make sure that you're utilizing your muscles when you're pushing during delivery and a very good clinician will wipe and hide quickly Pooping during labor remains a consistent thing despite there being a unique and magical amazing birth story from every woman that has ever undergone labor. However, much of pregnancy poop may sound grossly embarrassing um, that no new mom actually wishes to experience. It is absolutely normal to poop yourself while you're pushing. Let me say that again. It is absolutely normal to poop yourself while pushing. You will experience a lot of pressure, You'll feel like everything from your inside is coming outside of your abdomen through your bottom area. It's a high, intense amount of pressure. The birthing stool, again, isn't all that bad. In fact, your doctor will ask you to push like you're pooping because that is something that we have been able to relate to, to where you can track those muscles and you're able to poop. Now, pregnancy poop is actually a reassuring sign that you're pushing adequately and that your baby is distending well. So anything that's actually in the colon area will end up getting pushed out as the baby comes farther and farther along. So why does that pregnancy poop happen? 
Anatomically speaking, your pelvis has a limited space and can only hold a few contents. So when you push, the baby's head compresses the content of the pelvis, especially in the sigmoid colon. So that's the last curve of your large intestine, pushing the stool and sometimes a little bit of urine. So just think, you get a little pee with your poo. And who doesn't get that anyway? I know I pee every time I poo, so it's okay because all the muscles are very closely intertwined. A Valsalva maneuver, abdominal muscles and intercostal muscles are all of these muscles, okay? So when you push hard down, just like if you were to really grunt, those are the muscles that you're using during labor to push, Now, believe it or not, a Valsalva maneuver, when you're holding your breath kind of and pushing down, will actually cause a few other unexpected or unwanted side effects. A Valsalva maneuver is incredible for decreasing your heart rate, but at the same time, it can cause massive amounts of nausea and vomiting, especially if you are awake, breathing, and uh, grunting. When you use those same muscles that we just talked about, your abdominal muscles and your intercostal muscles, you use the same ones to actually poop. So it makes sense if you're trying to push all of, you're trying to push the baby out once the cervix is nice and open, you're really pushing and the head is now maneuvering, hitting that colon and really taking those poop trains on out. So again, you're very likely to pass the birth stool if you are pushing correctly. Believe it or not, it's an awesome sign for your OBGYN. Now, for everybody else in the room, it might not be something that you're really wanting. Another reason why you're likely to poop during labor is because of prostaglandins. These are naturally occurring body hormones that play a very important role in a normal bowel function and the initiation of labor. The same hormone is actually used to induce labor. When your body doesn't create enough of those prostaglandins and or those hormones, you will actually be put on a drip. Now, a drip is just saying different types of medication, and they will start, also known as Pitocin, to start really contracting all of your muscles continuously. Notice how my voice is getting faster and faster. That's exactly what this prostaglandin, what this actually will do. So Pitocin's going to pump, 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 pump those muscles. And guess what happens? You push, 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 and potentially poo. Do epidurals increase my chances of pooping? No. Let me say that with a nice exclamation point. No. If you're given an epidural, you will not feel like this huge urge to have to poop or empty your bowels. An epidural actually makes you more relaxed. So the stool may come out effortlessly, especially if your motor functions or your movement is not that great. So when you have a really solid epidural where they've blocked an epidural, just in case uh, you all have no idea what an epidural is, it is where you actually apply a needle into what's called the epidural epidural space. The epidural space is actually one space out front of the cerebral spinal fluid. Hence the difference between a spinal is what most women get, smaller needle, smaller amount of medication directly to the cerebral spinal fluid when they actually have a C-section. So spinal is synonymous with C-section versus an epidural is synonymous with pushing as a vaginal delivery. Now, the epidural space lies on the outside of the cerebral spinal fluid, which is that fluid that bathes the brain and the back so that they can talk together. When you are inside the epidural space, you can give what's called local anesthetics. Local anesthetics numb, right? So you are numbing the pain me- the pain receptors in specific areas depending upon concentration. So if I give a concentration that is adequate, we can make sure that from your belly button all the way down to a little past your booty is going to be nice and numb. 
An epidural, again, causes you to be more relaxed. Even though you have to have a high volume to deal with motor, you're still going to feel a little bit wobbly because when we block first your pain receptors, your pain receptors are very close to your movement receptors. So what happens is a small portion of them end up becoming numb. Now, if you've ever had a procedure done, let's say uh, you've had uh, your, you know, you had to have your arm done or you've had to have um, a rotator cuff repair or anything. I'm trying to think of um, that maybe if you've ever had a sports injury, a lot of times they will do blocks. And when they do blocks, again, talking about concentration, you'll notice that your arm feels really wiggly and that you're not able to pick it up and move it. Okay. So that same weird feeling before it goes completely numb is exactly what your belly button down past your vagina feels like so that you don't have the pain receptors. So when you go to poop, you're a little bit more numb. And sometimes women find it harder to actually appropriately push. I always recommend and or suggest a mirror so you can notify the brain, hey, I think I need to be pushing more like this. Or come up with an imaginary target, especially if you do have an epidural, because sometimes you will feel a little bit more wobbly and not as steady. So remember, even with or without an epidural, the stool will still come out either way as the baby comes out through the birth opening. Don't worry, ladies. Poop equals, hey, I'm going to see my baby really darn soon. One puke story. Ah, ah, ah. Jello Jiggler sounds kind of like a commercial, right? Well, all I know is that I was with my kids and we were making jello, something I haven't done in a very long time because I'm trying to get creative while we have a stay at home order in our state. All of a sudden, my kids decided to make jello shapes. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it, being that I'm about in my second trimester. A few weeks past my first week. I really haven't had very much nausea or vomiting, but I tell you what, the second those children started poking the jello, the jiggle motion of the jello reminded me of what I felt like my insides were going through. And all of a sudden, I ended up puking inside of the sink. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ami, for that hilarious puke story. I don't think I'm ever going to look at Jell-O the exact same way. Have you ever been on Zoom? Well, it was my first time. So Zoom is a application that you get to see people while you're having meetings. I myself am having the pleasure of having lots of Zoom meetings after this coronavirus. So... I'm also pregnant. It's kind of nice to work from home. The problem is, is in the middle of my Zoom meeting, I had an overwhelming sense of nausea. This was the first time it's ever really happened because I'm not that far along and I don't want to let my bosses in on it. So all of a sudden, I was in the middle of presenting and they can see me, I can see them, and I just ran. In the background, since my room is attached to the bathroom, I started vomiting my face off and all they could hear was dry heaving. As soon as I get back, I didn't want to tell them I was pregnant. So all of them said, oh my gosh, you might have the coronavirus. Go check out COVID-19. I was completely mortified and I have to say, it's going to be really difficult for me to tell them that I'm just pregnant and not sick. Thanks, Miss Mary, for that hilarious puke story. And again, for a creative new way to conference. I am a Buddhist and decided that I wanted to start practicing more of my meditation. Well, I am in my first couple weeks of pregnancy and never really considered 
morning sickness a reason to meditate or to stop meditating. So I decided to do it in the morning when I feel most at peace. Everyone talks about morning sickness. I had only experienced evening sickness, so I thought it was the perfect time. I sat my little pillow down on the floor. As I started pulling my legs in, I felt like my entire stomach and the baby was literally coming out of my throat. Before I got the chance to do anything, I put my head down and thought maybe I could overcome it with my mind. And instead, I ended up having a Buddha belly on my shirt covered in vomit. Let's just say that Buddha looks a lot different with puke for hair. (laughs) Thank you. That was a hilarious puke story at C-Y-N-T-I-A. C-H-I-C-K, Cynthia Chick, if I'm saying that correctly, thank you so much for that hilarious puke story. (laughs) Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. So how do you make sure that you don't poop on the table? Well, ladies, let me first just say it's kind of difficult to prevent pooping while giving birth. You might consider, though, to empty your bowel contents before labor. So the best way to do that is to move, to exercise. Everything gets moving and grooving. Now, I know that we all don't say that caffeine is something that's a good idea, but you know what? Caffeine, just less than one cup, can actually stimulate the bowels. So what I would suggest is whenever you're going on your way to the hospital or whatever that may be, you drink a half a cup of coffee. It'll give you some energy. You might be there for quite a while, so it's not going to affect the baby in any sort of way. But you will start stimulating your bowels to really poop things out. And not only that, but if you take advice from myself... I went to Kobe Steakhouse. It's like a Japanese steakhouse thing. And let me tell you, their yummy, yummy sauce is literally like a one-way exit train. You take those browns to the Super Bowl, baby. Um, But seriously, it was the greatest thing. I ended up emptying my bowels multiple times. Um, I think I was up to like pooping six or eight times before I decided to get my epidural. And it was in between contractions. And I also knew that I was less than four centimeters dilated. What all that meant is that I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to poop a small child into the toilet. Um, Again, a lot of people get very concerned. So you've heard of the stories where women think that they have to poop. And actually, it's really that pressure of the baby down there. They go to sit down on the toilet and all of a sudden a child comes out. Make sure that... You, your partner, your physician, a nurse, somebody knows that you're going to the bathroom. And I say that um, just out of caution, you know, make sure that there is that emergency panic button. If you start to see hair down there, um, you might want to pull that button just because of the fact that that pressure you are feeling is actually your child and not really poop that you have to do. So I always say get all your poop out as much as you possibly can before you go into that true active labor because What we call labor takes forever, right? So we have multiple different phases of labor. Um, We have the latent phase of labor, which is kind of like you chilling all the way up until when you're really going to start pushing after being 10 centimeters dilated. And for most first-time moms, that takes six to eight hours, okay? Then the active part, I mean, you can be pushing for hours. I know me personally, I had my first one vaginally very quickly, three pushes and he was out. Um, But a lot of my friends, it took them two hours. Some of my patients take four hours. I mean, the, the difference in the amount of labor is really dependent on how well you push. And also, what's the baby's head size in comparison to your pelvis size? And if they do recommend uh, you've been, you know, unfortunately labored for over 24 hours after your waters broke, it is considered dangerous because we don't want to increase the risk of having infections. Or if you, your temperature starts to increase, uh uh-oh, that means something got in there, you yourself are having a fever, and we really need to get the baby out. So that is a C-section moment. 
But going back to the uh, original question, do I really need to worry about pregnancy poop? No, not really. Most moms do poop during labor. And again, you are no different whether you do poop or that you don't. So it's okay and normal to poop, especially right before the baby is crowning. Um, Most of the time, this is when a lot of women would like to have the video camera. Um, Dads, just letting you know, If you can make sure that you focus in not on the poop, so go and tilt it a little higher up, even if you see, you know, the brown um, swirly ice cream looking thing coming out, just because of the fact that you are going to show that um, to your child at some point in time later and you don't want to embarrass your wife. The good news is that all labor room professionals, like we talked about, they're used to seeing poop. They're used to smelling poop and they're very good at disguising it. So the wipe down and move out of the way, that's why we have what's called chucks. Chucks are the disposable kind of like puppy training pads that go up underneath of the woman's bottom. And the reason why there's multiple underneath of there so they can wipe and keep it away and wipe and keep it away so that you can keep pushing. You are not being humiliated okay someone else will clean it up you probably won't even know and to be honest with you if you're birthing without an epidural you don't care Uh, if you have an epidural I honestly believe that me having um, a tummy like an upset stomach was way worse than my entire birthing experience and that's probably because I had a really good epidural but I didn't really feel it nor would I even know if I pooped I asked my husband and He told me no. I think it's because he wanted me to say no because all of my friends and all of my friends at the hospital were actually delivering the baby and I literally had 25 people in my delivery room. So if you are super afraid of passing, you know, poop during your birth, you are likely to go into labor like about an over an hour or longer than those who don't. So if you do poop, you actually will see your baby a little faster. So in 2012, a Norwegian study published by the BJOG, an international journal of obstetrics and gynecology, and also another one published in 2013, the Journal of Perinatal Education, found out that fear of birth is associated with anxiety, longer labors, a higher likelihood of having an epidural anesthesia and requests for elective and emergency cesarean sections. So you don't need to be afraid of pooping during labor. Everyone does it. Not even your partner, your friends, or your relatives should really make you worry. This is just part of the job. This is birthing an amazing baby that you have made. So last time I checked, superpower mom supersedes any type of poo down there. Again, remember all of these awesome tips on how to get the brown out before that you go into active labor needs to also be understood that, again, there's a standard of practice as soon as it is go time. And whenever that happens, your doctor You can talk to your doctor. Let them know that you're really afraid of pooping on the table or just consider it part of the trade. Once you're able to feel that way, you'll feel so much better about pooping down there. Pukeology Podcast, edutainment at its finest. If you like today's episode of Pukeology Podcast, let me know. Episode 34, Pooping While Pregnant. Now that you know the science behind, will I poop on the delivery room table? Why does poop actually happen, especially when I'm about to see the baby? Does an epidural really increase my risk? And even more importantly, what are some tips to help you before you get to the hospital or active labor? Ultimately, I'm here to give you the answers for the best information about pregnancy that there is to date. If you love me and Pregnancy Pugology Podcast, let me know. Five-star rating, hearts for likes. But don't forget to download this episode and more importantly, share it with all your prego friends. Thanks again for listening to Pregnancy Pugology Podcast, episode 34, Pooping While Giving Birth.